Well, uh, well, I, uh, let's see. I did bring up. Finally, I found the uh, one of Dwayne's posts, and so we're talking about July Fourth. Here's a short paragraph on which is written July Fourth. And it says, no independence, just dependence. It is July 4th, 2019, and here goes another messy, polluting mm -hmm. celebration of misunderstanding for those who like to look to authorities to rule over them. To the unaware masses, creating more poison and pollution and destroying the all-natural environment is a lifestyle that is so important instead of taking the time to see the abuse of control that most uninformed people like to agree to. With HARP, weather control ruining this planet on a daily basis, every unaware citizen has the right to add their part and make this world a lot worse. People are celebrating. What independence? There is no independence or freedom here. There is only stay dependent upon the created systems and the self-appointed authorities who have made them. There is a real life for those who sincerely want to see more than just created demise that eventually becomes nothing but huge sorrow. Almost no amount of warning will take unaware people from their chosen routines of ruining this world. There is a greater way to see and be in just a little tiny human view. Edward, are you there? Hi, you guys. Hi, Edward. I'm you, here. You want to comment on, did you hear the, the reading there? You, you have any comments on that or views? Well, absolutely. Your, I mean, how's your fourth over there? Uh, it was good. I mean, over here, we don't really have all the fireworks. I guess they had a few uh, cities around here that had them. But up where, uh, and there was cloud cover yesterday, too. So it was kind of quiet, you know. You didn't have the fireworks. You're not around a city. Uh, but you know what? I used to be the the guy out there buying the fireworks, blowing up the bottles, the little, uh, I like to blow up the uh, two liter bottle. And uh, I used to play around <laughs> with all that good stuff. So in other words, you turned. So now I, I get to look at, huh? You turned. <laughs> I turned. You turned, yes. I was turned. <laughs> it's just another way of saying you. You know, you you saw a better view, a better choice you made. Yeah, I was just up here hanging out with my animals. <laughs> well, this is very interesting. So my uh, female dog have pups mm -hmm. what uh, my female doggy here is gonna have pups any day now uh, what kind of pups so, uh, huh? the, the type of dog is uh, it's terrier mixed with uh, a siberian wolf husky oh my goodness uh, yeah so who is the when smaller? I have the, <laughs> who is the smaller, the male or the female? The uh, uh, the father was a little smaller than the mother. Oh well, that that'll work then. <laughs> My uh, cousin. Uh, uh, hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say my cousin lives on a farm. Uh, in Wisconsin here, and he bred uh, buffalo and Angus together, only he did it the wrong way. And when the cows went to deliver, the the, the calf was too big, and they all mm -hmm. perished. Oh. 
Uh, so that's kind of a sad story. I've but, heard, uh, I heard, heard them calling them beefalo or something. Beefalo, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I've seen them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They're good size. Wow. You know, we do, we do. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I, You're kind of breaking up a little bit. Yeah, I might have a tough reception up here. I just wanted to share with you that up here, we do have a farm. A guy runs a place here where he actually breeds and has a herd of buffalo. Oh. They're impressive. They're mm -hmm. very impressive. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're big. <laughs> They're big boys. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can imagine yep. hundreds of thousands of them, uh, you know, running on the plains at a time. Ooh. Oh, my God. <laughs> You'd really feel it under your feet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's I like with say, the Dance World movie, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I have a little female, eight-month-old. Uh, she's half Poodle and half Bichon. Now, she <laughs> recently uh, went out, had her first heat last month. And, you know, uh, I had to wait till she had that because they were contemplating some kind of female anatomy surgery, but it all corrected itself but what i was going to say is uh she's very active on the real side and her friend is a very strange looking dog male and he he looks similar uh to uh maybe a black lab with pug characteristics with some kind of a Something wrapped around his middle. He doesn't come from this planet, that's for sure. By the way, my dog is from Sirius. <laughs> she comes from that planet. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Uh -huh. Actually, that is far. <laughs> yeah, she's she's quite a unique dog. She's. I think she's she's very good in math. She's continually lining her toys up either in a straight <laughs> line, a circle, or a triangle, and she'll take her bones and lay them out in a circle, or she'll take her toys and sit them up while she's eating at, or drinking at her water dish. So she's she's kind of interesting. <laughs> Maybe you guys can write a book about your alien experiences someday. Yeah, I could do that. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't even know what to ask. I'm so interested and I'd love to hear more. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> Is it on that uh, uh, YouTube that's going to come up from what you did on Tuesday? His is, uh, this is, uh, my husband really did it with the visitor and Val and Edward and William. And uh, they're, it's it, telling you about the reptilians and what they're doing to us and what they're doing in our environment, basically. Oh, Is it, Bob? I, I think I just well, heard it. Well, plus, plus, you know, Val did a wonderful job as a visitor sharing with people <laughs> the need to uh, get get out of our brainwashing and remember when we were young and, and had a venturesome spirit and we had no restrictions as young kids, we had dreams of traveling among the stars. We need to return to that vision of total freedom and total ability and drop all these restrictions, you know, and, and wake up to what we're really capable of. And Val did a wonderful job on that show. And might I add, Edward, too, I, I felt the remorse that you felt, Edward, for what you've done <laughs> with the humans. Yeah. I really felt the remorse. You, you've you, yeah. you, you've had, had the emotion to it, too, you know, and I'm glad yeah. you turned. 
you turn <laughs> toward, the light, toward the light now. That's <laughs> right. It's, it'd be better, you'll be better off. <laughs> Vegetarian so, now. This uh, reptilian uh, thing ain't no joke. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Did any of you guys hear our uh, Sandy's uh, our blog talk radio show when Sandy was telling about her visit to Eckenkar during the the fall festival and and we oh, went yeah. over the temple. You remember that? And all the reptilians were yeah. all over the place, and the, mm. they just swarmed. They everywhere. swarmed everywhere. Jeez. Yeah, and each egg is ten what? Oh. Lost Jeff. What event was that, Sandy? Oh, okay. Yeah. Can well, you refresh us a little bit on that? I'm... Oh, I can't hear it. Well, we went to the fall, I think, the fall seminar. Worldwide. The, the, the worldwide seminar for Eckenkar, and we went over there to uh, warn people um about how everybody in that car was tap lined by the influence and we uh, had all these brochures made up where with Rebs a picture of Rebzar asking uh where Rebzar was asking the the members of Eckenkar to just do the new UU and call on him to show him what is real and we found that Probably ninety nine percent of the the echoes were so tap line, they didn't even want to bother with Rebzar, you know. They don't even recognize him as being a spiritual guide anymore. They don't want anything. Well, to it's know. their idea of Rebzar. I mean, their idea. According to them, it. he still lives in the Himalayas in a hut. Yeah, they they don't even think of <laughs> him know, as being a spiritual guide moved, or anything. You know, they haven't moved beyond that. Yeah. Uh, and then the back of the card said, "Did you know Joni? Did you not even recognize that Joni was a reptilian?" Meaning Harold Plump's wife. She is reptilian from the get-go. She's one of the baddies. Mm. Well, anyway, so um, I don't know. You know, Sandy mentioned that. Do you remember that movie with Bruce Willis called The Sixth Sense? Any, any of you guys watch that movie? Yes, I, re I remember. Well, in that movie... Um, if you haven't seen it, you, you should watch it. And what the movie was basically about was this young kid, this little boy that lived on the, the streets of a city, could see dead people. You know, after people died, they'd be walking around their astral body, and this little kid could see uh, dead. He could see the, the people that died in their astral body. And Bruce Willis... There was a big event in the beginning of the movie, and and Bruce Willis's wife. After this event, Bruce Willis's wife sold the house and moved on. And you know, she would never listen to him. He'd go and talk to her, and she would completely ignore her. And why he go out in the street and he talk with this kid all the time? I don't really want to give away the story, but um, it's the ability to see on the astral plane. Well. A lot of these reptilians operate on the astral plane, especially over in Eckenkar, all the ones running around the temple, inside the temple. And then at, at the, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Minneapolis and, and gone to the the, 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 the big um, center where they, where they um, have, have the setup, you know, all the talks by Harold. And uh, there are reptilians running all over the place. And, and, Sandy has that ability to see him. They were everywhere. Yeah, even the parking lot was uh, loaded with them. One of the things I, I found kind of interesting uh, when Harry gave his talk, you know, he comes on stage for an hour once a year, you know, and then uh, touts himself as the master. Well, but twice, twice and, a year. Yeah, well, yeah, twice a year, I should say, uh, springtime and worldwide. But anyway... During his talk, he had said that they have a wonderful river of light and sound underneath the temple. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to a year ago, uh, 
last October, a year prior to that, prior to us going this year to the World Life, I was downstairs in the fellowship hall. It's a, it's a basement. You go down the steps and uh, there's a big hall there with round tables and they have teas and water and whatnot. Uh, nothing to eat. They took that away because they said people were eating too much. But <laughs> uh, believe it or not, yeah. And uh, I kept hearing this growling and I, I had asked people, even Bob, did you hear that? No, no, I didn't hear anything. So I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. Well, when this year, when I went. Well, it was last year. Yeah, last year, 18 worldwide. Um, I saw that river he was talking about, only it's not a river of light. There are hundreds of reptilians living underneath the temple. Mm. And they're not the good ones. Well, it turns out that the, they spent all those millions of dollars and and we're collecting fees from all the members. When you set money into Ekinkar, you could doesn't you could donate money, and you could designate whether it went for building the temple or or for doing the the preaching the preaching of the gospel to the world. <laughs> and all the money that that is was spent on the temple. Apparently, not only did they build the temple and a bunch of other buildings there, they built underground accesses for the reptilians to freely go in and out of the mm -hmm. underground cities mm -hmm. that they're living in, and they use the Akinkar temple grounds as their entrance to the underground. Yeah. Mm. Oh, we put, I put all Ray Bizarre's pictures in, the do, in their donation uh, boxes too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had fun over there. Yeah, we had fun. <coughs> you know, and one, I don't know, but, did you hear my, did I tell you guys about my experience, one of my first really real side experiences when we went over oh, there? that was good. <laughs> I don't know, do you guys ever hear that? Oh, when you met Harold? Yes, you've heard <laughs> that. I yeah, did, that's... but the other people may not have. Well, when, when we went over there, we stayed in a motel, and uh, on Friday night and then Saturday, we were going to go over and uh, start, you know, dropping off all these all these things with Rebazar and talking to people and everything. And and the morning, about six o'clock in the morning, on Saturday morning, the the night that that uh, Harold would be speaking at the auditorium, Harold came to me and and my just before I woke up, he, he came to me. And just big as life, and he stood. I mean, I never had an experience like this in my life before. And he comes to me, and he's standing like a foot away, right in my face. <laughs> and and he, and he says, "Robert, why are you here?" <laughs> and I said, "We came over here to ask you to come clean and tell the truth about what you're doing and how you're destroying all these lives." And you have a great opportunity to turn everything around and, and be a help for the real guides and the all is if you will just fess up what you've been doing and come clean. And his response was, absolutely no way. I am not going to do that. I am very happy with what I'm doing, and I'm not going to do any such thing. <laughs> and then I woke up from my uh, real side experience with him. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I had, uh, excuse me. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I've been getting uh, on my email messages about the uh, court case, and it should have came up at the end of June, but I haven't heard what happened. The tap lining court case? Yeah, where he was harassing this man for six years, and he's suing him for a billion dollars. I don't know any. I I know of it. I haven't heard. I haven't. Yeah, I sure. haven't kept track on that either. I I have heard nothing. Well, once a month they would send me an update, and now they quit sending it. So, mm -hmm. the, and then the last uh, thing was Harold uh, appeared to him and said, "You're not going to win. I know the judge." <laughs> Well, he, he, he probably, probably means a probably, reptilian judge. Yeah, well, oh, no. most, judges are, most judges are reptilians. <laughs> so 
So he's probably right about that. Uh. <laughs> By the way, I'd like to make a comment about uh, the Fourth of July, the the freedoms, the fourth, the, the freedom from tyranny. Um, I used to work on a, on a sled farm out in Idaho when I was a young young kid. I was in my early twenties, and I'd been there for about six months, six or eight months, and I found out that the thing, the whole thing, was run as a tax write off for the mafia. All the all the member, all the owners were 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 members of the mafia, and uh, one of them, one of them was um, uh, John Train, who was in charge of manipulating the uh, stock market up and down every three and a half years. And he wrote a book about it. He called it "The Dance of the Money Bees." And I met all these. I I, I met all these people in person. By the way, another member was Henry Cabot Lodge Jr. Another one was. Um, the, the guy who, who all the Gene Autry films were made on his property on the shores of Lake Tahoe. And another guy was the vice president of Standard Oil for all overseas oil operations. I mean, he, we're talking some real big wheels. And my immediate boss, who was the son of, of the big farmer that ran this potato farm as a tax write-off, told me one day, he said, he said, life is a lot different than you think it is. And he said, the United States, we call the United States the big experiment. And, uh, and I asked him to explain what he meant by that. And he said, it was an experiment because up until the United States became a, a nation and, you know, when, when they declared their independence, up to that time, all rulership in Europe and around the world was done by kings and queens and dictatorships. And that was a covert role. I mean, if you were living in Spain or uh, France or uh, under one of those dictators or Russia, you knew that you were being ruled over by some you know, uppity up. And they called, and when they created the United States, they called it the big experiment because they were going to keep exactly the same amount of power and control, but they were going to create a government to make the people think that they were free when they really were not free. And so it, they always called the, the United States the big experiment where they went from covert or overt rule to covert rule, but the power they held was exactly the same. Only the American people didn't know it. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. And, and like Dwayne was saying, it might be Independence Day, but the only independence that we have is the fact that we don't know who's ruling over us. Whereas when we're when we're under the King of England or the King of Spain or France, we know knew who was ruling over us. In the United States, we don't. We're getting the same role, but we don't know the person that's doing it. It's all behind the scenes. So we don't have any more freedom now than we did then. We we just don't know it. That's and that's why they called it the great experiment. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we can uh, wow. go ahead, Edward. Yeah, Val, I just wanted to chime in there. Bob, that's interesting um, because, you know, I've actually been living my life uh, as a journey to rediscovering my freedom, independence, and sovereignty as a human being. And, and actually, if you actually read the, the uh, you know, the, the different documents, the, the uh, Declaration of Independence, every person that stood up and fought for this country at that time, mainly the white European uh, men, but the people that stood up and declared independence at that time, they earned their sovereignty equal to the king of England and the kings of and the queens of Europe. Now, with the schemers and the scammers and the smart people, they've twisted everybody into 
not even knowing what their birthright is. Well, see, that's what <laughs> you're saying is the scam that they pull on people. When you read We the People, you know, and then, you know, the rest of the story, We the People, um, we've been brainwashed to believe that where it says we the people are the are the common man of America. The truth of the matter is we the people are actually the reptilian people that are running the show. That's who we the people are. But but they scam the Yeah, they scam the people to believe it. And the reason why the kings and queens and all them gave in and said, yeah, you have equal standing and sovereignty with us is because it was part of the, it was part of the scam. They wanted you to believe that you, you had equal standing with the kings and monarchs of Europe, but you still had to pay taxes, right? <laughs> you know, the, the point was as long as, as long as you're paying taxes, no, nope. you know, I mean, the states collected taxes, even though the federal government didn't collect income tax, all the states were taxed. I mean, even the original colonies were taxed. Uh, I mean, like, you look at the original colonies that were set up, like Jamestown, they were taxed so heavily that, that they almost starved themselves to death. I mean, I mean, it never quit. Huh. They, the people well, were told they're free, but, you know, but they really weren't. Right, right. Right. So, you know what, Val and everybody, Ariana and everybody, Kevin, everybody on the call, you know, this is really interesting because, you know, I hear what Bob is saying as plain as day. He's very clear in what he's saying. And he, he's saying that he doesn't believe that he said that it was some kind of a trick or, you know, to that effect. And I get that. But, but I see it completely the opposite. So I see it that I am sovereign and I am free and self-sufficient and I get to demonstrate in my life how I live. It's, well, it's, it's my choice. Well, as, as free beings of light, we really are free. And we, and we, should, we should consider ourselves sovereign and not under the thumb of all these reptilian controllers and the Keck corporations and everything. Absolutely. That's going and that's absolutely true. However, all I'm saying is the United States government was a fraud. Well, okay, I understand. You see it that way. And, you know, but this is really powerful, you guys, because to me, this demonstrates that. You know, Bob, I respect Bob all the way, you know, all the way everywhere. And um, I, I see that he has, you know, uh, he has a viewpoint. And I choose to see that a little bit differently. And we each as an individual get to choose, you know, our interpretation. And for me to be fully realized as a human being to be free to be independent sovereign I, I get to feel that deep in my being and you know i just get to live from that place and i feel I live from that place and i'm taking total responsibility and authority for my immortal spirit You guys, I'd uh, like to invite everybody here to a potential interview with uh, Mark Charles, who I'm in contact with his team. He's running for president of the U.S., and he's uh, running on this very subject, um, basically, we the people. He's challenging that uh, we the people idea. Well, never has the women the women or the minorities been represented in we the people so that's his platform basically but we'll be potentially interviewing him and you folks can come on and uh, share 
what your viewpoint is and see where he's going with what he's what he's uh, idea is running for president <clears throat> but um, I'm gonna say you know we try to keep it to an hour here so we're gonna kind of cut 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 off here but it's been interesting everybody um, keep that thought <laughs> And keep also that everything you're you're doing, you know, see if you can relate it to the isness, because that's that's the idea. Everything that we're involved in, how does it relate to the is? In some way, you can you can maneuver it so that it can. <laughs>